and thank you so much uh, for being here for the second annual uh, I Partner with My Public Library Award. Uh, my name is Noah Lenstra. Um, I'm uh, on the faculty here at the University of North Carolina Greensboro School of Education. Um, and I'm so glad uh, that we have people on the call from all over uh, the US uh, and Canada. Uh, thank you so much for being part of this, uh, this event and this celebration. Um, and we're so thrilled uh, to uh, celebrate um, the work uh, of, of these amazing uh, partners today. I uh, just wanted to go over our agenda, so we'll we'll start by just a uh, yeah welcome, give a little bit of context about what these awards are, uh, then we'll go into the main event, celebrating uh, the 2024 award ease. Um, uh, we'll we'll then take some time to celebrate uh, our amazing honorable mentions, um, and then we'll just close with a call to join us again in 2025. Um, um, so just to give a little bit of context about how we got here, so um, my, my work really focuses on health promotion in public libraries. Um, and so uh, back during the presidency of Barack Obama uh, here in the United States, there was a big initiative called Let's Move, uh, focused on harnessing the totality of the United States federal government uh, to support uh, healthy families. Um, and so um, just saw in that an opportunity for public libraries to align their efforts with this national campaign uh, to, to get involved in, in health promotion. And since then, um, I've really just been off to the races in terms of understanding the critical importance of community partnerships. Um, we can do so much uh, when we work uh, with, our, with our communities um, to, uh, to transform them and to make them stronger and more resilient um, and livable for everyone who's in those spaces. Um, and then I uh, just wanted to also acknowledge um, uh, if, if we were thinking about what we could do to celebrate uh, partnerships, we looked around and saw uh, two uh, award programs that existed, the Urban Libraries Council Innovations, um, which they release every year, um, examples of urban libraries innovating in their communities, um, as well as the American Library Association, I Love My Librarian Award, uh, which invites uh, people uh, to uh, celebrate uh, the librarians that make a difference um, in their lives. Um, and so we thought, uh, what can we do to turn that around um, and give a platform for librarians to celebrate uh, the amazing partners with whom they work um, to, to, to make a difference? Um, and that led to uh, last year us starting uh, the I Partner with My Public Library Awards, uh, which we hope uh, will become a, a, an ongoing tradition alongside the other awards that I just mentioned uh, to continually uh, inspire and inform um, and excite uh, people both in libraries um, and in the broader, broader world about um, what can come when we pool our resources and work together to make our communities uh, the strongest, uh, most resilient uh, places they can be. Um, and so just wanted to, before we go into uh, the 2024 awards, I want to just really briefly highlight some of the uh, people and, and partners that won in 2023. So we had an amazing ceremony uh, last year and would definitely encourage people to go back and look at who won in 2023, because ultimately our hope in this awards is to create kind of an ongoing um, compendium of kind of amazing, inspiring stories uh, that will kind of of, uh, inform and inspire and excite uh, partnerships of all types uh, in all communities uh, all over the world. Um, and so we, in, in our first year, we celebrated everything from uh, school districts uh, teaming up with public libraries to transform how education occurs. Um, uh, science educators who had worked with public libraries for more than a decade uh, to transform STEM education. Um, and in one case, uh, even uh, constructing a new bench uh, on a bus line uh, in front of a library. Uh, this, this image is from a, a community in, in Southeast Ohio where uh, a transportation department teamed up with the library to uh, really uh, make, make kind of the library's bus stop more, more inviting and inspiring. 
Um, and so without further ado, uh, we're just going to go right into our, our award uh, for, for 2024. I uh, just wanted to give a little bit of context. Uh, so um, during uh, summer 2024, when the call for nominations was open, we ended up receiving 61 full and complete uh, nominations uh, from 32 states, provinces, and territories uh, in the United States uh, in Canada. Uh, those nominations were then shared with a team of 30 volunteer reviewers um, who uh, used uh, a rubric sheet uh, to score and evaluate um, the 61 uh, nominations, resulting in uh, 11 uh, awardees uh, and 10 honorable mentions. Um, and, and I must say, uh, it, the reviewers found it a little bit difficult to only, only award 21 because every every of the, one of the nominations was, was really stellar and so uh, just want to thank everyone who submitted a nomination uh, your stories were all incredible um, uh, but um, without further ado uh, we'll go right into uh, the 2024 uh, winners um, and and so how this is going to work um, I'll just do a very brief introduction to each of the the awardees and then I'll turn things over to um, uh, either the, the nominator or the winner to, to just share some brief remarks. So our first awardee um, is in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, which is the first Arab American majority city uh, in the United States. Um, and they are one of the Dearborn Public Library's key partners uh, is the Arab Community Center for Economic um, and Social Services. Um, and I'll now um, turn things over to uh, Patty, um, if, if you're ready, Patty, uh, to, to say a few words um, about your partnership. Uh, go ahead, Patty. Well, thank you, everybody. We are so appreciative that we won this award. Our library nominated Access for this award because of the phenomenal work that they do. Access is the Arab Community Center for Economic and Social Services and is the largest Arab American human services organization in the nation. It has been serving this community for more than 50 years and provides more than 1 million services annually. And we have representatives from Access and our library in this room with us today. So yay! thank you so much. So both of our org respected organizations focus on community. So we figured that this was a perfect choice to apply for this award and to work together to bring culture, literacy, and a sense of community to the adult learners at Access access. To accomplish this, Access and the Library held a series of class visits, bringing their students into our libraries. These students took the first steps toward becoming independent users of their public library. Many of them were parents who took books home to their children and later brought their children to the libraries for the very first time, thus increasing literacy skills for the entire family. This program was successful because of all of our commitment to the students to make this happen for them. It was unique because many of the students were unfamiliar with the concept of free access to a public library. So a whole new world was opened up to them by doing this. For many students on a limited income, the library, which is one of the last public spaces where somebody can go and not be expected to spend any money, was something incredible to introduce them to. This partnership also eliminated another big barrier that people face, transportation, since we actually uh, uh, planned for and arranged bus service for them to come to our libraries. And lastly, the students learned that the library is a place where everyone can go and feel welcome and feel a part of their greater community. In my application, I wrote, happiness is a universal language. And we could tell by the smiles on the students' faces how happy they were to be included and educated at our libraries. This still stands true. This for the first go around, go around was so successful that we are doing it again. And we plan to maintain this for as long as we can and as long as the students need us. So thank you again for this award. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, Patty. Yes, we're we're so 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 grateful. Um 
Yeah, and, and, and now moving from, from Michigan to Utah, uh, we have uh, Ballet Next, uh, which was nominated by Park City Library, uh, where these partners have worked together to not only bring uh, ballet and the performing arts to their community, but also to bring um, uh, diversity, uh, services for Spanish speakers, and even transforming the library's auditorium through a grant um, of almost $100,000. So just, a, just an amazing partnership. Up. Um, and I'll turn things now to Adrian and Becca from the library to say a little bit more about this partnership. Go ahead, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Adrian Heracor as the director of the Park City Library. I'm here with Becca Lale, our community events coordinator, and Michelle Wiles and Matt Helms from Ballet Next. Thank you for having us. When Michelle Wiles, former principal dancer with American Ballet Theater in New York, moved to Park City, Utah, she found inspiration upon entering the Park City Library. Not only did the library bring the community together to support people of all ages, but we also had a resource that spoke to Michelle, our underutilized stage in our historic Santee Auditorium. The classic stage had the potential to be the ideal setting for her dance company, Ballet Next, to bring live ballet performances to the Park City community. She reached out to me and I quickly saw the vision of what she was proposing and a partnership was born. In our community, bringing live ballet to the library stage means many people can experience live dance for the first time. Since the partnership's inception, Ballet Next has performed Giselle, Swan Lake, Nutcracker's Greatest Hits, Sleeping Beauty, Mixed Repertory, and more. It is a delight to see the eyes of the audience light up at the sight of high caliber performances they never would have experienced otherwise. Michelle is passionate about using the library's theater for community-oriented ballet to make it accessible to everyone. This partnership provides over 200 free tickets to each performance. Park City is a resort town that values our wide range of socioeconomic families, including our vibrant Latinx and Spanish-speaking communities, many of whom and we don't have access to live ballet. So Michelle began integrating English and Spanish bilingual offerings like Don Quixote. And we just recently on, on the screen did a special bilingual family story time where she had international ballerinas come and perform and speak in Spanish and English to our families, which is really special. Through this partnership, thanks to Ballet Next, we've had so many kids say they want to dance, perform, and be at the library. And it's been a great experience in every way possible. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> Yay, thank you. So, so inspiring. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and we'll, we'll now kind of uh, just uh, move from Utah to Alberta, um, uh, where uh, the Edmonton Aboriginal Seniors Association has worked with the Edmonton Public Library on a variety of initiatives, most recently focused on um, culturally um, centered uh, cooking classes using the library's new kitchen, but in the past has also worked on on digital uh, heritage initiatives. Um, and I'll pass the, the mic uh, to Sharon Day from, from the library to say a little bit more about this partnership. Go ahead, Sharon, please. Hi, thank you, Noah. So yes, I'm Sharon Day. I'm executive director of customer experience at the Edmonton Public Library, um, joining you from a really beautiful day here in 26 territory. What a joy it is to participate in this kind of a ceremony. Thank you so much. Uh, it's such an honor and a, a privilege to celebrate community partners in this way. Um, and um, and also having so many partners and libraries in attendance is also really special. So um, we at, at EPL, we are just so pleased that um, we have this really exceptional community partner, the Edmonton Aboriginal Senior Centre, and that they're being honored with the I Partner with My Public Library Award. So the Edmonton Aboriginal Senior Centre is a nonprofit organization um, in the Edmonton area, and they've been a, a really valued and cherished community partner um, and collaborator with EPL for quite a few years. Um, but we've been able to um, really been enriched through this partnership and uh, collaborating with them on some a really wonderful and engaging food-centered programming. 
So we're always looking to try out new ideas and create new services to inspire learning and create connections. We launched our teaching kitchen at the Milner branch, our main downtown branch in 2020. Um, and one of our first partnerships through that in that space was the Edmonton Aboriginal Senior Center. So um, we offer this wonderful program. It's called Sharing Food and Stories at a Multicultural Table. So through this program, seniors from the center are able to come to the library, learn new skills, share culture, create a meal, um, celebrate together, and also connect with other community members while while having their meal. Um, and it's a it's a wonderful way to connect with community and also to um, uh, uh, support people who may be facing significant challenges such as food insecurity. Um, so the seniors and staff have been exceptional partners. They're so kind, so flexible and open to embracing and trying new ideas. They have incredible, generous spirit uh, and they've made the program a real success. Um, we, another little added benefit is that they um, sh have been sharing their treasured recipes with us. So this is amazing. They've authored a beautiful cookbook. Um, which we're able to add to our library collection. And it's just another way to, to include uh, more people in sharing that culture um, and recipes and the stories behind them with the rest of the city as well. So thank you so much um, for the opportunity to celebrate um, all the Edmonton Aboriginal Senior Center and all of the partners um, that are, are receiving awards today. Um, and I look forward to continuing this valuable partnership. And um, I would like to give a congratulations to all the winners. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and we're so glad you're here with us today. Um, uh, thanks. Um, next, we're just going to move to, to North Carolina, um, uh, close, close, close to me. Um, and we have uh, um, the High Point uh, Public Library nominated Growing High Point, uh, this nonprofit, uh, which has been uh, a library partner for, for many years, but most recently has been uh, a central partner around kind of this new Grodega initiative, Growing High Point's mobile market, um, which the library both helped the nonprofit get off the ground and has now worked with uh, to embed the library into this outreach. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass things over to uh, Julia and Karen uh, from the High Point Public Library to say more about this partnership. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Julie Rayner, and I'm the Digital Services and Marketing Coordinator at the library. And I have in the room with me um, leaders from Growing High Point, members of the Grodega staff, our farmers market manager, and library staff. So we've got a we've got a full house here today. Um, and on behalf of the library, we're really thrilled to be here for this recognition of one of our best community partners. Our library outreach coordinator, Karen Idol, nominated Growing High Point for this honor. She has worked with Growing High Point for three years by including bookmobile service at the community locations that they serve with their mobile farmer's market, Grodega. Grodega takes produce from the urban farms they maintain into community areas that face in food insecurity. They provide fresh produce at a discount to those who receive SNAP benefits. The library has joined their community locations to provide books and crafts to the children, as well as provide library cards and information about library programs and services and the library programs with other agencies to bring additional resources to these bookmobile stops as well. Karen told me that working with High, Growing High Point has deepened the library's relationships with community members and with their kids, as well as the apartment managers where they live. One of the most successful aspects of this partnership is sharing the power of produce or pop club with the kids in these neighborhoods. The Farmers Market Coalition created the Pop Club to provide a fun opportunity for children to engage in the local food system through conversations directly with farmers and exposure to new fruits and vegetables. In addition to participating in educational activities, Pop Club kids receive vouchers to spend on produce. Karen shared that by working with Grodega, we can take the Pop Club out into the community and children can select produce on the spot. The kids are excited to receive their tokens, so each week's to shop, in addition to picking out a book to take home. Grodega staff share excitement with the kids about the produce available on the truck, encouraging them to try new things. Karen and the Grodega staff work together on the financial literacy part of the program, encouraging to kids to save as well as to spend. Jody Sarver, Executive Director of Growing High Point, really enjoys seeing the relationships 
that the, are built with the families. She shared that Karen has learned all the kids' names and she greets them and makes them feel welcome. The pop club feeds their bodies, but it also meets social and emotional needs as well. Growing High Point has been a consistent, reliable partner. They are team players willing to work together in improvements and adjustments as we tweak the club to better serve the community. We are excited to honor them as they receive this much deserved award. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, Julie, um, and thanks for sharing uh, this partnership with us, Karen. Um, next, we're, we'll go to uh, Northern New York, um, uh, the North Country region, um, where uh, uh, library throughout the North Country library system nominated uh, Kylie Shell uh, with Encompass Recreation for the work that, that Kylie and Encompass have done since 2022 uh, to expand access to uh, not only recreation, but learning for the widest uh, widest audience possible, um, uh, and have also uh, worked with libraries to help them achieve this open doors uh, certification, uh, demonstrating their, their commitment uh, to accessibility and inclusion. Um, uh, and we have uh, Laura Orvis uh, and Bobby Frederick uh, from, from the library system um, to share more, um, and I believe I also saw Kylie on the call. So, hello, Kylie, and we're so glad you all are here. I'll, I'll pass the mic uh, to uh, Laura and Bobby. Hi, thank you. I hope that you can hear me okay. Um, Bobby, unfortunately, isn't able to be here because um, I'm talking to you from Syracuse, New York, at the New York Library Association conferences. Um, but I still would like to share some stuff um, from us and also from partnering libraries, um, mainly the Watertown Library Flower Memorial, which is our reference library. Um, and so Encompass Recreation um, started working with us, our library over the winter of 2023 and 2024, and we joined the Open Doors family. While the weather and illness conspired against us, we persevered and became part of the vibrant community. This process involved small interviews with Encompass Recreation representatives and resulted in a new sensory kit for our children's room and a sticker to display on our side door. The open doors decal reminds library users that there is a policy and expectation that our staff is tolerant and accepting of those who differ in support needs. Uh, this location is making a public statement that they are welcome to those of all abilities. Increased movement and noise is allowed and welcome in our libraries and sensory kits are available to anyone who may need them. While our library is actively working to be welcoming and inclusive place for all, this designation is the next piece of the puzzle promoting our message to the community. It will help patrons, both card holders and non card holders alike, to recognize our commitment to including all members of our community. Kylie Shell made this level of inclusivity and Open Doors family a reality. By establishing Encompass Recreation in the North Country, she brought together a group of people in a way that didn't seem possible before. The Flower Memorial Library and um, Han Memorial Library, along with many others in the North Country, um, have gotten this position possibly together on our own, but Kylie and Encompass Recreation's presence and support immediately gives our message the ultimate boost. Our library's community is stronger because she's in it, and we're very grateful for her. Some specific examples of programs that Encompass has helped with uh, partnering with libraries are Lego clubs, sensory Santa programs, sensory Easter bunny programs, art clubs. She facilitated a donation of kids snowshoes to our library system for loan throughout the, or throughout the system. And um, North Country libraries are shouted out on their Facebook page and social media really often and um, it helps us welcome new patrons into our libraries and serve everyone even better than we could before so we're really appreciative of kylie and feel so proud to be able to put the open doors 
sign on our doors and we're just thankful for you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Laura, for sharing that incredible story, and and thanks also for taking some time out of your conference schedule to 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 share share with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, very very inspiring. Um, we're now going to to move uh, to uh, Hamilton, Ontario, and and I believe I saw uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson on the call as well. Um, but uh, just really, uh, this this uh, was a really inspiring story of uh, um, um, an immigrant from the the nation of Liberia who moved uh, to Hamilton, uh, fell in love with the public library, um, and then started working with the public library with a vision of creating um, a lib a, a lib uh, a public library and learning center uh, in in his native country of Liberia, um, and bringing it all all the way to fruition. So a really amazing partnership. Um, and I will now uh, pass the the mic uh, to Meg DeForest uh, from the library to say a little bit more about it. Thank you. Uh, so yes, I am Meg DeForest. I'm the senior leadership support manager here at Hamilton Public right. Library, and. On behalf of our CEO and Chief Librarian Paul Takala and the entire uh, HPL team, thank you for allowing us to recognize and honor one of our great partners. Um, throughout its history, Hamilton Public Library has been privileged to be a part of some fantastic achievements powered by um, shared vision, collaboration, passion, and hard work. And the development of the Liberian Learning Center in Painesville, Liberia is one such achievement. In 2019, our CEO, Paul Takla, traveled to Painesville, Liberia for a groundbreaking ceremony um, of the nation's first public library since it experienced civil wars during the 90s. And this was the result of numerous years and countless hours of work on a project led by the passion and vision of Leo Johnson and the Empowerment Squared organization. They are realizing a dream of creating a facility that can transform the region's educational landscape and provide access to diverse learning resources to over a quarter million community members. In, um, in 2006, as a young immigrant to Canada, Leo Johnson saw our Hamilton library system and pledged to find a way to deliver this service to his native country and throughout his tireless work founding the nonprofit organization uh, Empowerment Squared. Leo has since developed numerous relationships and secured partnerships and supporters to bring his vision to, um, to fruition. Despite some challenges, including a worldwide pandemic, uh, perseverance is prevailing. This past year, phase one of this ambitious project was completed. And the work continues with phase two plans underway to create a safe and well-equipped indoor recreation facility. Leo's vision has become a reality and HPL is exceptionally proud to be a project partner and to assist with developing this community-based library system at the Liberian Learning Center. This partnership also involves HPL staff working as mentors to the newly hired Liberian Learning Center staff. This means su supporting the staff through in-person experiential learning internships here in Hamilton with support from our local university and college libraries at McMaster University and Mohawk College, as well as ongoing support and mentorship between HPL and the learning, uh, Liberian Learning Center, starting actually with my visit to Liberia in December to support their staff in the grand opening of the facility. One of the HPL's strategic priorities is to provide everyone in our community with access to information and knowledge resources. And this partnership allows HPL to achieve this purpose beyond traditional borders and allow Liberians access to global digital resources they never thought possible. Outside of the Learning Center, Leo and Empowerment Squared continue to make a positive impact right here in our community. Empowerment Squared works with staff, volunteers, partners, and community members right here in Hamilton and other communities throughout southwestern Ontario to respond to the needs of newcomers. Their programs uh, and mentorship initiatives, activities, and events empower newcomers in racialized and marginalized communities by helping them access post-secondary education, professional skills development, entrepreneurship, sports, and recreation. And HPL has been privileged to be a partner and to help facilitate this work as well. So on behalf of Hamilton Public Library and the whole Hamilton community, I am proud to um, congratulate Leo on the I Partner With My Library Award, and it is certainly well earned and deserved. So thank you, Leo, and congratulations. Yay, thank you.
<laughs> um, wonderful. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed reading this uh, this incredible story. So thanks for sharing it with us all. Um, uh, we're now going to to move to Montclair, New Jersey, uh, where uh, Partners uh, for Health oh, I Foundation. Like let me, sorry about that, getting a, a live mic here. Uh, but New Jersey's Partners for Health Foundation uh, has worked with uh, the Montclair Public Library for the last seven years on, on, a, on a number of initiatives, including an award-winning summer lunch program, a pilot social worker, social worker at the library initiative, um, and a community big read uh, featuring Matthew Desmond's book, Poverty by America. Uh, and that uh, that is this is the picture with with Matthew Desmond uh, discussing his work. Um, uh, and and I I believe we have Miss Pam Scott uh, from the Partners for Health Foundation to say say a, a few remarks. Um, I'll, I'll pass things over to you, Miss Scott. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is this is quite an honor. C can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, this is quite an honor. Thank you so much for. Um, recognizing our work in this way. Um, as our name suggest, uh, suggests, at its core, Partners for Health is about building partnerships and collaborations. And like, like Let's Move in Libraries, we focus on strengthening partnerships that make our communities healthier places where everyone can thrive. And our partnership with an anchor institution like Montclair Public Library is integral to our ability to meet our mission as a funder in the Montclair area. And we're really proud to share this recognition with them. I'm sitting here with Radwa Ali, who is the director of the library. Um, our, our collaborations with the library are designed with one thing in mind, which is how can we do a better job of meeting the needs of our neighbors who are most vulnerable to health inequities? And as you mentioned, the, the three programs we've worked on together over the last few years were a summer lunch program, free summer lunch program for low-income children so they're better able to return to school in the fall ready to learn. Our grant, more recent grant to the library for a social worker um, was because we recognize that there are a lot of people walking into the library seeking services and guidance and we wanted to make sure to support um, those efforts to provide that information and referrals. And again, as you mentioned and as you can see in the photo, the, um, the program we did just in uh, mid-September of this year with Matt Desmond and Andrea Elliott um, in a conversation about Poverty by America. It was a really powerful night with 350 people in attendance. And um, we all, we, it gave us an opportunity to think about um, the book and the conversation. Um, it, the challenge is us to think individually and as a community about what each of us is willing to give up so that others may thrive. And we're very happy to say we're already planning another uh, similar program for um, the fall of next year. Um, Albert Einstein once said, the only thing you absolutely have to know is the location of a library. Maybe some of you have heard that quote. We couldn't agree more. We not only know where Montclair Public Library is, we also know that we can count on them to be a partner that is helping to build thriving communities. So thank you again. This is we're very excited to to participate in this. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and and I can't wait to to learn more about uh, the the uh, initiative you do on fall 2025. So thank you mm -hmm. so much for being part of this and and for sharing this uh, this amazing story. Um, we're now going to move uh, to uh, Maryland, um, where through an innovative partnership uh, between a nature refuge uh, and a public library, urban youth uh, got connected uh, to nature, both at their library branch um, as well as at the refuge through uh, a co-led story time hike and campfire with the ranger series of programs. Um, the partnership uh, eventually became so rich uh, that, that the library helped the refuge in terms of um, doing uh, more kind of community engagement and community visioning. Um, and we have uh, Lynette uh, Del Prata from the Anne Arundel County Public Library to tell us more about this partnership. Um, Lynette, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Noah. So I'm here um, with Jason from the Patuxent Research Refuge and Fran off camera from our library system. So 
Um, thank you very much for um, including us in this. So we are the Maryland City at Russet Library. We are in Laurel, Maryland. We're about, we're one of 16 branches in Anne Arundel County, huge county library system. We are about 30 minutes north of Washington, D.C. in a really densely populated um, urban area with really concentrated retail development and really all the hustle and bustle that goes with that. But if you just travel three miles, 3.3 miles up the road, um, you will find 13,000 acres of tranquil forests, meadows, and wetlands at the Patuxent Research Refuge. They are part of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Urban Refuge System. Our partnership with them began in 2020 when we were searching for ways to connect with our community during that thing we had in 2020, um, and we couldn't go uh, inside so much. So passing this natural oasis on her commute each day, one curious staff member, not to be named, who had an idea um, when she saw this big, huge sign, blue, scary sign that said the word research on it, research refuge, and thought, huh, I wonder if they'd be interested in helping out with some programming outdoors. So within first, the first months, and I call it a cold call, we cold called them, uh, within months of the first call, the refuge rangers had jumped into outdoor programming at our branch with both feet. And our branch is in the middle of a concrete jungle. We do not have a lot of outside space. Um, we had scavenger hunts, we had bug explorations, bee studies, live animal demonstrations, owl pellet dissections, on and on. Um, they brought all those into our community over the coming, the ensuing months. It was clear during those initial events, though, that although we were such a short distance from the refuge, a lot of the attendees did not know it existed or that it was open to the public. So four years later, the refuge is still a steadfast partner. They say yes. They say we can make that work more often than not. Um, in fact, I don't think they've ever turned any requests down. And you know we're librarians, so we make a lot of requests. Um, and they are a federal program that has experienced many budget cuts and many delays in hiring, and they still say yes. Um, since then, we've expanded um, to include campfire story times, as Noah mentioned. These are extremely popular. Um, they're complete with osprey spottings, snake encounters, and at one, we had a very adventuresome ranger who took us through lots and lots of grasses and lots and lots of ticks. So, and we still had people come back next time. So all the rangers have been so patient friendly, they have a welcoming approach and they make these events a really positive experience for even the most novice of explorer. It's wonderful. Um, in addition to that and direct response to all that nature programming, the branch actually now has monthly staff led hands on science Saturdays, we call them. Uh, they inspired us, we saw the interest and we responded. Thanks to the refuge generous donations, we now do birding kits that are lent out um, and we're hoping to do fishing poles soon. And finally, recently, Noah mentioned, the refuge embarked on a co-design for a part of their property that involved the community. And we were so happy to be able to help them connect with marginalized and underserved communities for that. So our connection has supported their urban refuge system goal of working with community partners to expand outdoor recreation and education for individuals living in and around cities. And of course, I would say the best outcome of this partnership has been that it challenges really both of us to think creatively how we can serve the changing needs of this community. And it gives us a chance to expand both of our visibility in the community. It's good for us, it's good for them, Therefore, it's good for the community. So it is a win, win, win. We are so happy they're our partner and congratulations to them. Yay. And thank you for that, uh, those inspiring remarks, Lynette. I love hearing how partners can not only support each other, but also challenge each other and, and help each other grow. So, so wonderful all around. Um, uh, next, uh, we want to move to uh, Denver, Colorado, where uh, the Denver Public Library nominated the Grow House, um, uh, which uh, has worked collaboratively with uh, the Public Library um, 
to on this uh, this food box program, uh, which has helped distribute over 30,000 fresh food boxes um, and providing the equivalent of 633,000 meals to Denver communities across 14 library branches. Um, and we have Beth Warren from the library to say more about the, the partnership. And I also noted that Maria Elena from the Grow House is here on the call. So welcome to both of you and Beth, uh, please go ahead. Thanks, Noah. Yeah, um, I actually saw a few other of our uh, friends from the Grow House here, as well as Denver Public Library. Uh, thank you so much for recognizing Denver Public Library's partner, the Grow House, with this award. The Grow House is a community-led nonprofit advancing food justice through food access, wellness education, and leadership development. Our partnership was developed to help meet food access needs of families in Denver by distributing fresh food boxes at 15 library locations. This partnership developed out of a need to address pain points in our grant funded food box program. These are things like vendor relations, lack of library staff capacity and food distribution logistics. The Grow House was the perfect partner to address those needs. They not only brought expertise, but solutions that were already working for thousands of community members across different neighborhoods. They brought professionalism and proven strategies to get healthy food to the folks that need it most. Um, as Noah mentioned, since joining forces with Denver Public Library in 2022, the Grow House has helped distribute over 30,000 fresh food boxes and provided the equivalent of 633,000 meals to Denver communities. This partnership has been successful because we've leveraged each organization's strengths with the Denver Public Library as a trusted community hub and the Grow House as a leader in sustainable and responsive food delivery. What makes this collaboration so special is that it really is a partnership. We have shared values, shared commitment to the community, shared risks, and shared successes. We lift each other up, we work through difficulties, and we stay focused on a shared vision, improving food justice for the people we serve. To close, I'd like to share a quote we submitted as part of our nomination of the Grow House. It's from a customer at our Hamden Branch Library, which is located in Southeast Denver. The customer says, the kid-friendly recipes in the box are fantastic. My kids love cooking with me. I even renewed my lease across from the Hamden branch because it's such an incredible resource for us. Books, programs, food, and more. Thank you again for recognizing our phenomenal partner, the Grow House, with this well-deserved partnership award. Love that. Um, yeah, uh, property close to a library, that's, that's, a, that's a hot commodity. Um, great, great to hear. Thank you so much, uh, Beth, for sharing that, that amazing story with us. Um, and, and next, we're going to move to uh, uh, Delaware, where um, uh, the, the Route, Route 9 Library and Innovation Center, uh, part of the Newcastle County Libraries, nominated the University of Delaware's Partnership for Healthy Communities, Health for All uh, program, which has collaborated with the library on everything from health fairs uh, to bringing students to the library, um, creating memory kits, um, and so much more. Um, and so I'm thrilled uh, that we have Scott uh, Buzinski from the library here with us to say a little bit more about this partnership. Go ahead, Scott. Hi, uh, thanks, Noah. Uh, so my name is Scott Buzinski. I'm a librarian here at the Brunei Library, uh, Newcastle County Libraries, the great state of Delaware. Um, I'd like to thank Noah and uh, Let's Move in Libraries and all of the reviewers of all the submissions. Um, so thank you so much for your time um, reviewing all those. Um, I first met Christine Sawinski of the Health for All program uh, I was looking back at my emails, it was April 2022, and uh, two and a half years later, um, our partnership is still going strong. Um, it is certainly uh, multifaceted um, and truly transformational. Um, and our staff and patrons are incredibly grateful um, for their presence in our library space. Um, Noah had kind of touched on this a little bit before, but I'm going to kind of mention a, just a few things what this partnership can offer us. Uh, we have once a month health and wellness screenings offered by nurse practitioners and nursing students from the University of Delaware. Um, includes uh, blood pressure checks, uh, blood glucose, and some other things as well. Uh, we've built a, an incredible network of health community health partners and contacts um, through um, this partnership with uh, Health for All. Uh, we were able to host a, a very successful health fair in May 2023. Um, our alignment of our strategic goals and um, our, you know, our understanding of the um, social determinants of health in our community um, are very much um, on the top of, of our minds and in both organizations. Um, and also 
being able to work with um, the students at University of Delaware. Uh, the picture here is um, from this past semester in the spring. Um, students at University of Delaware have been able to create health literacy um, resources um, what, you know, while working with library staff. Um, and we, this particular picture is a, uh, just a, it was the, uh, the day, the, uh, I'm sorry, it was the event day for um, showcasing the memory kits um, that uh, memory kit templates that they'll be showcasing um, throughout Delaware, hopefully in the coming months or so um, to circulate in our library of things collection. Um, another great thing about working with these students is that we are able to work with students ages 18 to 22, 25 um, to talk about the importance and the value of public libraries. Uh, so we all at the library cannot solve every issue or alleviate every pain that sort of permeates our vulnerable community that we serve. Um, but with great partners, uh, we are able to witness um, positive change. Uh, Christine, Heather, and Professor Dr. Jessica Edwards are extraordinary people and so deserving of this recognition. Uh, I thank you for your continued partnership and seeing the humanity and all of the individuals that you serve. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Scott, and, and love how you highlighted how this partnership also excites uh, young people about uh, the value of libraries. So great all around, um, very inspiring. Um, and, and last but certainly not least, uh, in this year's uh, awardees um, is uh, Woods Home, um, nominated by Calgary Public Library in Alberta, uh, a mental health center that provides treatment and support for mental health needs um, and has worked uh, with the library on creating well desks um, and we actually have some pre-recorded remarks um, uh, from the library that I'm going to quickly pull up and play now. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Robertson and I am the Director of Service Design and Innovation at the Calgary Public Library. I'm so sorry I can't be there in person today but I'm so pleased to share a message on behalf of the library as we celebrate our partner Woods Homes. This is a partnership we are so proud of. Libraries are community connectors with extensive reach and a goal to remove barriers and increase access to services and supports that will help people reach their potential. However, libraries are not the experts in navigating the mental health crisis that our communities are facing. Skilled, dedicated, and compassionate organizations like Woods Homes are. This recognition is a testament to the commitment Woods Homes has made to providing accessible mental health support for Calgarians through the library. The Wellness Desk provides free drop-in and on-demand mental health and addiction support, health information, and referral services from crisis counselors at select library locations. And the response has been outstanding. Over 99% of individuals using the Wellness Desk said they got the help they needed and over 97% said they had a clear next step. We know that a successful partnership is one with a shared vision and collaborative approach where contributors leverage their strengths together for the greater good of the community. It is this relationship between the library and Woods Homes that is making a difference in the lives of Calgarians. This is such a valued partnership and I want to express my gratitude to the whole team at Woods Homes for their continued commitment and dedication to our community. Thank you to Let's Move In Libraries for this recognition. It means a lot to us that the work of Woods Homes and the Wellness Desk has been recognized through this award, and we want to extend our congratulations to all of the award winners and honorable mentions. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, thank you once again uh, to, for everyone for for being here and for sharing some remarks. Um, and and I want to make sure uh, again. Uh, first, we had sixty one nominations. All of them were were truly inspiring and amazing. And and it's almost a little bit painful that we can't <laughs> can't celebrate everyone. But we did want to uh, celebrate uh, ten honorable mentions uh, that rose to the top uh, based on the 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 our thirty reviews. Um, and I'm just going to just say. Uh, some brief brief words about uh, these these partners so first um, thanks to a partnership with Cherry Hill Public Library uh, the Alice Paul Institute Girls Leadership Council supplies the library's period pantry and helps in the fight against period poverty. Congratulations for what you've done um, uh, with the Girls Leadership Council. 
Uh, then in Kentucky, the Challenge Health Movement worked with the Hopkinsville Christian County Public Library to provide tutoring and snacks um, to at-risk youth uh, in the inner, inner city neighborhood served by the library. Uh, moving to Ontario, since 20, 2018, the Durham Children's Aid Society has partnered with eight public library systems across the Durham, Ontario region to bring 48 drag queen story times to communities large and small. Uh, in addition to this programming, this partnership has opened the door to uh, deeper relationships with other 2S LGBTQIA plus uh, community organizations. Um, next, uh, since 2005, uh, the Early Childhood Intervention Program Alber of the Alberta Health, Health Services has brought new programs to libraries um, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in Edmonton, um, uh, Alberta, uh, while also increasing uh, library staff competencies around how to include children with all but the most complex disabilities uh, in developmental delays. Um, and. Um, Elmwood, uh, nominated by the Hubbard Public Library, um, works with uh, its library on a Reading Pals uh, intergenerational library program entering its third year in 2024. Uh, in this program, older adults, elementary school-aged children, and their families come together for an hour during which they read a picture book together and then engage in activities and art related to the book. Um, so really amazing things. Uh, we could we could spend a whole another uh, hour just hearing about these amazing partnerships, um, uh, but just have uh, five more uh, honorable mentions I want to uh, briefly highlight and then we'll just open things up to a, a final celebration. Uh, in Fulton County, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, AARP volunteers uh, support the library in everything from safe driving to CPR classes. Um, volunteers lead safe driving workshops. Um, and in 2024, uh, 30 tax aid volunteers uh, helped file 871 tax returns. Um, uh, in Virginia, uh, the Prince William County Circuit Court Clerk's Office works with the local library to bring court services to libraries. Um, the Clerk's Office Seals on Wheels comes to library every month, uh, rotating across the 12 library branches. And one library has even uh, a self-service kiosk uh, for clerk office services, which you can see pictured here. Uh, next, in Colorado, since 2011, uh, Summit Stone Health Partners has worked with the Powder County Libraries to increase access to social and mental health services um, through everything from access to transitional employment opportunities, social work services, um, and mental health training for library staff. Um, uh, then in Washington, uh, the D Tacoma Needle Exchange, uh, pictured in the center, has worked with the library to provide third certified peer counselors, uh, training frontline library staff um, in the distribution of naloxone, uh, providing naloxone boxes next to the library's existing AED machines, um, and also providing support around time sensitive issues, uh, such as when the library becomes a heating or cooling center or when library staff need advice on grappling with new issues affecting patrons. Um, and, and rounding out uh, this year's honorable mentions uh, in Arizona, uh, the Gila Valley Arts Council partnership uh, with the Stafford County Graham County Library increases access to artistic and cultural opportunities um, in this rural community. Uh, the GVAC brings artists to libraries on a regular basis, um, and in 2022, the library developed an early literacy concert series to connect uh, the library's resources even more tightly to those being offered by the Gila Valley Arts Council. Uh, congratulations to all the honorable mentions, um, and I just want to briefly open the floor in case uh, any of the nominators uh, of the honorable mentions would like to share any any brief remarks. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can. All right, this is Leslie Talley, Assistant Director of the Safford City Graham County Library, and we just want to celebrate everyone here today. It's been amazing to hear all of the different ways organizations are partnering with their libraries. 
and especially a shout out to our Gila Valley Arts Council. The learning and the partnership and the opportunities that they've brought from us can't be um, celebrated enough. It's been amazing the things that they're helping us bring to the community and the work that they're helping us do in early literacy. Yeah, thank you so much, Leslie. And and thanks Hi. everyone. Oh, go oh. ahead. Yeah, Marcy, oh, I go was ahead. Gonna, I just wanted to. Uh, my name is Marcy Myers. I'm with the Fulton County Library System, and um, I just wanted to thank you and thank and congratulate everyone and thank you for giving us this opportunity to um, let the AARP and all of these organizations be recognized for po collaborating with the libraries. We are grateful for that collaboration, and our patrons and uh, community members benefit beyond words. Yeah, thank you so much, Marcy. And yeah, thank, thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, hold, hold space for one more moment in case any, anybody else wants to jump on a microphone. And as you're thinking, um, I'll just uh, say uh, I, I want to thank once again the 30 reviewers, um, uh, some of whom are on the call today uh, and without whose uh, uh, support uh, this, this would not be possible. Um, and so you can read the names of the 30 reviewers um, as well as read more about this year's awardees. Um, uh, we're a little bit uh, delayed. One of my uh, staff members got sick, uh, but we're hoping to have a, a very fleshed out uh, web page for the honorable mentions which should be going live um, early next week. Uh, so uh, by, by Wednesday of next week, you can read about uh, the 11 awardees and, and 10 honorable mentions in detail. Um, but I uh, just want to thank everyone again uh, for submitting nominations, helping with the reviews, uh, working collaboratively in your communities. Um, uh, we're all stronger together and, and uh, just want to thank everyone for being part of this uh, inspiring uh, event. Uh, I just feel so energized and so grateful for your time and participation. Um, and yeah, let's, let's, keep, let's keep working together and, and keep, <laughs> keep, keep doing amazing things. Um, and so, yeah, you can just go to let's move and libraries.org slash partner hyphen award uh, to read about all of them. Uh, and finally, uh, just uh, put in your calendars. Um, we'll be we'll be doing this uh, in 2025 uh, and beyond. So we'll be opening the call for nominations June 2025. Um, uh, the nomination period will close September 1st. Um, uh, we'll be announcing awardees uh, October 1st uh, and then having our awards ceremony uh, in November. And so we want to keep kind of uh, yeah amplifying, uh, celebrating, um, uh, shouting from the rooftops how how powerful um, public library collaborations with community partners can be, um, and really really celebrating the fact that this work is not possible without uh, the amazing partners that we've we've had the privilege of celebrating today. Uh, so thank you all for for everything that you do, um, and uh, yeah, keep doing the work and uh, have a, have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Um, and yeah, bye. Thank you, Benel.